Introduce yourself, please. Kuchai of Ivan Pavlovich, 24th, August, 1992nd year of birth. Title and position. Chief Petty Officer of the Bosun crew of a large anti-submarine ship Admiral Pantelev. Was assigned. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We haven't had this yet. We've already interviewed 600 people. Admiral Pantelev, it's a big ship. Large anti-submarine ship. What is this ship doing? Search and destruction of submarines. Wow, is it huge? 156 meters. Wow. It is almost 20 meters wide. Are you the bosun? Yes. What is the bosun doing? Painting, mooring operations, lifting and dropping anchors when stopped at sea. He also gets possessions. You know, all sorts of salvage. Head of housekeeping? You could say that. In a simple way, you are an ensign, that is, a foreman. No, I have a land rank, senior sergeant. And on the ship, the rank is chief foreman. Is there someone else senior on the ship above you? Yes, I have a supervisor. How many people on such a ship? About 400. 400 people? Exactly. How many people were taken to war? From the ship? Yes. All in all, more than 20 people have already been taken. Cool. And what team did you serve in? It turns out that we were assigned to the 155th Marine Brigade, 2nd Squad Leader, 3rd Platoon, 4th Rifle Company. Do you consent to the recording and publication? Yes. Why did you agree so quickly? Well, because I have nothing to hide. Who made you do it? Nobody. How can you prove it? There was no abuse, no questions to me about it before. Now I confirm it voluntarily. What's the point of hiding anything? How long have we known each other? About 20, maybe 15 minutes since you called me. Well, not 20 minutes, I think 3 minutes. Well, I'm talking in general. That's when we came in. If you take all the moments today when you came to us. Well, yes, it was. We paid money for you. Why would we want to do that? I can't answer that. You're a real bosun, you're smart, you know how to steal, let's think about it. To exchange us for other people, the same prisoners only from the territory of Ukraine. Oh, it will be interesting, thinking man. A program to reward our defenders for taking prisoners is working. Because our military doesn't take you prisoners, but the payments help keep the balance, let's say. I understand. So that we have a replenishment of the exchange fund and then. So that people. You, murderers, looters, to be exchanged for our guys, to take them home. Thank you people for helping. There's a camera. Thank you people for collecting, for helping, for keeping us alive. Thank you very much for that. How much do you value a person's life, in money? Generally. It's a philosophy. And to put it simply, I don't know. Everyone probably has a different perspective on this. I mean, you know, I didn't ask myself such questions. You're lying. I mean, I wondered how much money it would take to live. No, you're lying, you're not telling the truth, you're lying now. Shall I explain why? Explain. How much money will your country not pay for your death? Now they pay out about 12 million, as far as I know. See how simple it is, why are you lying? I understood you. Is this true? Well, it turns out that. Yes. I just didn't think about that moment. Critical thinking. Well, they don't pay, because corpses are destroyed. There's no corpse, you don't have to pay. Or people are considered missing. Right, and how? You are a bosun and you run with the infantry. Motorized riflemen. I don't really like it at all. Well, that's no good, we shouldn't be sent to the marines. To have them serve, it's a completely different kind of military in a completely different occupation. There were guys who had held an assault rifle twice, fired six rounds of ammunition, and they were just sent to the slaughter as cannon fodder.
In fact, that's how it was, with no communication, no coordination, and no coordination of any kind. They just threw us out and that's it, and forgot about us for five days. What does that tell you? That the command is not interested in you at all. The second one? The second is that there is no management, no coherence in the armed forces, well, at least here, in certain groups. I won't say it's all the armed forces. What else could this be about? That shipmate is a cool word. Shipmates are sent as stormtroopers. Yes, it is. But what does that tell you? There are no people, no one wants to fight. Three. Cool, any other thoughts? Probably not. These are basic thoughts. I understand correctly that they are now hiring people who, in fact, need to be replaced by someone. Someone has to perform your duties? There is no one in my position right now. Who else was taken from the ship? The torpedo men were leaving. They don't have torpedo men on the ship, you can torpedo them. A lot of people were leaving and the cooks were leaving. To war? Yes, exactly in the 155th Brigade. Was a cook and went. Went as a shooter, a regular shooter. Where is he now? I don't know. Well, he was here about two months ago. Someone became 200th? Yes. How many? Two people from our ship. Who? One artilleryman. They've been here for two days. The 200th in two days? Okay. And who else? So before I left, we had a guy who was a signalman. Killed the signalman? Yes. Great. He seemed to be in the rear. They don't even have a connection. How were you selected, based on what principle? They just read the order and that's it, without any principle. Who decided? I know that they send those who are out of contract. Our contracts are not interrupted now due to mobilization. In the armed forces. And who ran out of contracts? That. They are sent. First of all. To war. Yes. Contract. If you don't sign a contract, you go to Ukraine. Now they're signing. Well, people try to sign. When were you sent away? On the 26th of November, 2022. December, January, you fought for two and a half months. Well, we arrived in Ukraine on December 19th. You said Ukraine. To Ukraine. And why not Na Ukraine? Na Ukraine is when you come here with a weapon to attack. And how you flew in, because? I flew in for this, but I think this position is wrong. You flew to Rostov, when and where did you cross the border? They selected people there. Some to the 40th Marine Brigade, some to the 155th Brigade, and put them in cars. They took us to some kind of shooting range, I don't remember the name. It was nighttime, and we drove for quite a long time. We were given ammunition. Some got it, some didn't. How is it? Whoever had time, took it. Some had 10 or 15 magazines. You're like Terminators, 10 shotgun magazines, coming to kill us. Or one. Killing Ukrainians. Well, we didn't say those words, it's just. Did anyone have only one gun magazine? Yes. And then? And we, it turns out, were taken somewhere, to an incomprehensible place. We drove for a long time at night, and came to some field. We were dropped off, built up. How many people? There were about a hundred people in all. Well, it dawned on us in the morning, and we found out that we were near Volnovaka. We stand in positions, in the field. Who was the company commander? Lieutenant, only after college, call sign, Nochi. Who? N-O-H-C-I. Nochi. Nochi. A pure-blooded Russian? Probably a Dagestani. Who are you? I am Russian. And he is a Dagestani? Yes. Was he mocking? No. Or what? He's ordinary and has an ordinary attitude. He wasn't mobilized? No, he's a graduate of a military school. Did he study long? He is a lieutenant by rank, but usually in Russia you study for five years. How much should you pay for this trip? Well, according to all the assurances we were given, about 200,000. But we never received a payment. Never received money? I got my money in December, my paycheck that I get on the ship. 
How much do they pay on such a ship? Do you have a ship that smokes? No, diesel. Diesel? Gas turbine engines. Yes. I get an average of 76,000 without any extra. Well, that's normal. And it doesn't matter if you're on land or not? When at sea, they still pay extra. If you are sailing to India. Well, there's about 20, 22,000 a month extra on hand. You were brought to the field. We were given two days to settle in. Yes. Then they started giving classes. In the field? Trenches and dugouts were dug there. Three. Where was it located? Near Volnovaka. What did you eat? Twice a day they brought hot cooked food. All the time? Well, practically. There were no problems? No, food was not a problem. Were there firings? There was no shelling of positions there at all. How long were you there? A month and four days. Wow, what accuracy, then what? Then they packed us up, loaded us into cars, no details. Without details. We were taken by trucks to the village of Kirilovka. To school. Teach you? We left all the extra stuff there, roughly speaking, all the stuff except for the ammunition and weapons. The entire company was put on vehicles, BMPs and APCs. There were two pieces of equipment for each platoon and we were sent to the so-called Upper Dachi in Ugladar. We were supposed to. As far as I understood, a paratrooper company was already stationed there. They occupied some houses down there on one side, some houses on the other side. We were supposed to be delivered to them. On the way there, heavy artillery fire began. Also, there was a gun battle on the approach to the site. Well, our drivers, who were in my platoon from inexperience or from confusion, they took us to the very top of Verknie Dachi. Roughly speaking, we were immediately surrounded. We got out of the APCs and ended up with only 12 men left of the platoon. The others? They didn't make it. Someone jumped off while they were driving. Someone was caught by shrapnel. Were there two hundreds? Yes. I have personally seen the two hundreds. What did these people die for? I believe that. For stupidity. Because they came here. There's no war here. That's what happens. Some kind of routine takeover of territory, distribution of some resources, and so on. I made these conclusions already here. When I watched something, Talk to the guys who took us prisoner. Well, at least that's the conclusion I drew for myself. Wow, you have conclusions. Because a lot of people don't get it. Who attacked who? The Russian military invaded. Occupants. To the territory of Ukraine. Are you occupiers? You can. You are an occupier. Yes. Land territories of Ukraine. Why not? I realized that already here, not in our homeland. What did they say in your homeland? If you compare the news I've looked at here today, everything is the opposite. Our news says that Ukrainians are shooting at their own civilians, at their own homes. That's what our news is saying. And who is the shooter in your opinion? Well here I saw that our troops were shooting. Why do you think we didn't fire on our houses until February 24th? Yes, it's all clear by now that we just have propaganda from our leadership, politicians, armed forces and so on. We understood that here. Basically, the people I was with when we were captured, I think they saw it and understood it. What happened next? There were 12 of you left. We landed with an APC, and one guy who is with us now had his legs run over by our APC, so he didn't have time to crawl away. This is the one who had an amputation. It's another man, he has a shrapnel wound in one leg and a bad contusion. He didn't break anything to himself, he couldn't walk, he dropped his weapon right away. He stayed there at the landing site. And the other guy who had his finger amputated, he... He crawled away from us, we didn't even see him. 
We left the wounded guy with the walkie-talkie. We started trying to break through to the houses under heavy artillery fire. Everyone who was with us came under fire for the first time. It's scary, to be honest. We. Did our military hit the target? They didn't hit the men, but they hit the equipment. Damaged? There was a lot of burnt equipment, a lot. A lot? Yes. Well done. Quite a few hits. You guys are the best. We broke through to the house. It's too bad they didn't hit people. We were afraid to go into the house, because we had no experience. We made our way into the underground garage, it's two stories, but the first part is underground. That's a lot of equipment, how many is that in pieces? Three, four pieces. Well, while I was driving, there was a lot of speed, well, there were about five burnt tanks that were still smoking. Were these new IFVs? New, new, five, six IFVs, a couple of Ural trucks. There were no people in sight, I saw burning equipment. Wow, is that all the new equipment burned out? It was new equipment on fire, not old. Five tanks, five BMPs. About five, six BMPs, a couple of Ural trucks, that's what I personally saw. Generally cool, right? Our guys are great? The artillerymen are good. We don't shoot as accurately. What's your accuracy? We shoot roughly, at least I made such conclusions. What does very approximately mean? We asked to open fire on the house next to us. At home. Dot out of five, six shots, only one hit. No, well, in principle, training is super when you take a cook and send him to the front. I take it you're some artilleryman was put in the line, given a weapon, or what? No, everyone who gets to the front is a rifleman, if the rank, for example, sergeant, they can make him a squad leader. They just send you to the slaughter, no matter who you are or what you are. They don't know their positions on the ship. Did they make Marines out of you? Well, roughly speaking, yes. Rifle company, rifle company. On the first day we sat with our platoon commander, well, he was also literally appointed before we left. The platoon commander is a sergeant? Yeah, well, he's supposed to be a lieutenant, but we had a sergeant who served for two months. He came as a volunteer, signed. Your company commander is a lieutenant, a graduate. Funny, did the sergeant ever serve? He served for one year as an enlisted man. And so he became a platoon leader in the officer's position. Cool. He was appointed by the company commander. How did he choose? I can't tell how. That is. Just. Yeah, he took a man from the platoon and just assigned him. Have you been assigned? I also remained a squad leader. Also an officer's position? No, a sergeant's position. Right. And that's it, we were trying to get in touch with the military radio. But as I understand it, the radio was picked up, because in the place where we were and got in contact, they immediately took accurate artillery fire. So one of you went out on the street? Yes. The radio wasn't catching well in the basement, and we had to go to the windows, to the gates, go up to places like that. And as soon as you left? Immediately there was an artillery barrage, literally one minute and that was it. Immediately in the same place there was accurate shelling. Well done. That is, the electronic warfare works, it turns out? I mean, yes. They take direction and succeed. Trace and shoot. Set new coordinates. It turns out, yes. Well done, right? and then we were handed. We somehow tuned in to the Bifang channel frequency, we had no connection to the company commander we were sent to. We had a connection with the guys in the nearest houses, as far as I could tell. Here we were in contact with them, they got in touch with the company commander, who gave the order to take up a circular defense. We, in turn, reported that there were 12 of us and we had no food and no water at all. We had about 5 magazines and 2 grenades of ammunition. We had one wounded man at the time. So you couldn't talk on your military radios? No, only on the Chinese radio Bifang. It was used to communicate. So you didn't care about that? 
I don't know. But do you know it's bugged? But there was no other way to get in touch at all. The second army of the world, and this is its representative. That's it. On the second day, your armed forces came in, two guys, for reconnaissance. They ran in quickly, a short firefight ensued. One of ours, the one who saw, fired a magazine into the ceiling. Why the ceiling? We had very little ammunition, and the men were untrained. Panic. Everything happened quickly. Where they saw any signs of movement, they shot there. Figuratively speaking, they were shooting at the ceiling. You noticed? Yes. Your military quickly came in, looked and left. There were two people. That's all. We tried to go outside and shelling immediately began, either with a machine gun or with a machine gun from a neighboring house. Ours? Yes. That is, they already knew that we were sitting there. Well, when the guys came in, our soldier tried to throw a grenade, he was hit with a machine gun and the grenade exploded. He covered himself with it. The grenade hit three other guys. Your D'Artagnan wants to throw. Yes. He opened the doors and your guys started shooting at him. And he didn't. Were they standing or sitting? They were on their way out of the place, but they saw the door open and opened fire on it. And he's already made it. He already had a grenade in his hand, and he couldn't throw it because he must have been shot. And he fell on the grenade with his body, and we were all in the same room and three other people got shrapnel wounds from the grenade. Why was he trying to throw a grenade? Well, he thought he was going to throw out a grenade. Is he dead? He was killed and three other people were wounded. Why didn't you give up? Were you offered? No, in the first days no one shouted, there were fights and shootings all around. You hid? Yeah, so on the third day we got in touch with the same two guys again. The order was the same. We said there was no water at all anymore. We broke out the pipes there. We melted the ice so that we could have at least a sip of water a day. On the fourth day. On the fourth day there was a battle. Here were the guys reporting over the comms. And on the fifth day in the morning there was no communication at all. Even on the fourth day at night. On the fifth day in the morning the radio air was silent, both on military radios and on regular radios. And somewhere near lunchtime, maybe 11 o'clock, a gun battle broke out. Your soldiers came in and a shooting fight ensued. I was still trying to get in touch while the guys were shooting, fighting, but in the end. I sat next to the wounded. There were about two magazines of ammunition left. A tank fired at the building. Many were concussed. Someone was covered with shrapnel. Eventually we ran out of ammunition, and those guys, those guys who were closer to the gate, they said they were giving up and that was it. Orders followed to get out, to get out, to lay down our arms, and here we were at the end coming out with the wounded. How many of you were there? Eleven, with the wounded. Deceased. And how many of our military? Fifteen people, maybe sixteen. Did you have grenades with you? We used grenades at the beginning of the firefight, we only had four grenades. At the beginning of the gun battle. And we were putting two grenades on the stretchers. Who took you prisoners? Unit. They didn't introduce themselves. Normal guys? Attitude was normal. Were you beaten? No. They didn't even lay a finger on us, they gave us water and cigarettes, because we had been sitting there for a long time, we hadn't eaten for five days. They even gave us four, five cans of stew per group of people. They talked to us, told us a lot, showed us videos. Why are you telling me what I want to hear? Well, that's how it happened, that's how it happened. Well, why do you do that? That was the fact. That is, the guys were loyal to us, and that was surprising. And there were even casualties on their side during the firefight. 
well, it kind of surprised me. When we were captured and a little bit realized everything after the battle, when some understanding came back after the concussion. What happens next? At least I'll be back home. I will go back to my wife, to my loved ones. All those who serve, who might want to go here as volunteers, if there are any. I will explain what war is here and that there is nothing to do here. Because it's not war, it's just some kind of political game. I don't agree with you. It's just that people are being destroyed here. And people who are sitting somewhere and sharing the money. I've heard talk about Ugladar, that you can't shoot at mines and certain houses, that supposedly they've already been bought out, resold, and so on and so forth. Somewhere in Russia, therefore such a process is going on, there are such rumors. But. Have they already purchased our property? It's out there somewhere, in power. No one has ever told me that before. Well. Were you banned from shooting at a particular mine? They said that artillery would not fire at these mines for that reason. It was when we moved here to Volnovaka that we were told so. What will happen to Russia? Will your country be able to fight? I don't know if they start now. Some kind of, I don't know what to call it, riots and insurrections. First and foremost, this applies to the wives of those guys who are missing. This is a very large number of people. I don't know what's going to happen, in general, with the political regime, and so on. Because. It's scary not knowing where your relative is. He just disappeared somewhere, that's all. You are 140 million. Yeah. We're somewhere around 40 million, well now about 30 million. What's wrong with you, why can't you beat us? I have two thoughts, I'll tell you about the first point. If you look at it from the military side, because I'm in the military. Let's look at it both ways. Then it turns out. There is no action planning at all, we are thrown in as cannon fodder. Even if you take my company, it turns out that there is no information upstairs about the dead. When we stormed Pavlovka. Some clips appeared on the internet, and it all went quiet very quickly. Why was it quiet? Reported to management and. This issue was closed and never came up again. What happened to the assault? There were a lot of casualties, people were sent to the swampy area, even the tanks were bogged up to the turret, they were chased through the fields, without any training and so on. And how many died? Yes. The internet said it wasn't true. This information was disproved two or three days later, and then everything went quiet. The question was closed, that is the first reason. It's a lack of awareness and ignorance on the part of higher command about all the activities that are going on here. That's my opinion from a military point of view. That is, if everyone knew the truth. Well, maybe, in that case, at least they've established some sort of leadership of the troops, and so on. So there you go. And the second, in terms of politics, many countries have realized what is happening here and are supporting you. And that keeps us from moving forward. And those countries that are helping you are doing the right thing. Traditionally, we have prisoners of war address the address their fellow countrymen, if you will. The guys who are going here, who are sent here by order. It's better not to. That's not what we're told is happening here. We don't have a war. Something else is going on here and we have no business being here. Thank you. All right, thank you. 